and welcome to another session on literary criticism and theory. We continue with literary concepts. We had uh, discussed ambiguity in the last class. Now let's move on to negative capability by John Keats. So objective correlative is done, ambiguity is done and now we are to start negative capability. But before we move on to negative capability, we have to or we should be uh, able, to, we should have an understanding of Keats. You all are pretty much uh, familiar with Keats and his poems. But Keats as a critic, who is he as a critic? That is something perhaps that uh, most of us or most of you uh, would be wondering. So, unlike Kelly, uh, uh, unlike uh, Coleridge or Shelley, Keats was not a professional critic. He was a poet. Initially, he was a student of medicine, but he dropped it and he became a full time poet. Coleridge, uh, on the other hand, S.T. Coleridge, on the other hand, of course, William Wordsworth is both a critic and a uh, uh, a poet so we we don't have to uh, look at him uh, in detail um, uh, but again uh, Coleridge wrote uh, sorry uh, Wordsworth wrote his lyrical professed to the lyrical ballads only to defend again to speak about the new movement that he brought uh, forward but uh, Coleridge was indeed a critic uh, and um, uh, if you look at another thing is if you look at Shelley, so Coleridge, a critic, his biography, Literaria, his concepts of fancy and imagination, his concept of uh, the willing suspension of disbelief. Again, I want you to bear this thing in mind, willing suspension of disbelief, because it was Keats who brought forward this negative capability, the idea of negative ca capability. And after some time, uh, whether he was uh, uh, aware of Keats's uh, negative capability or if he was aware of uh, the letter that was written by Keats to his brother, we don't know. But still, uh, later, um, uh, Ke Coleridge also wrote something similar to it and that was the willing suspension of disbelief. So, negative capability and willing suspension of disbelief of S.T. Coleridge, negative capability by uh, Keats and uh, willing suspension of disbelief by S.T. Coleridge has similar uh, idea okay uh, but that was written only after or um, that was something that came later uh, by uh, Coleridge uh, in fact uh, this negative capability uh, Keats wrote this negative capability because uh, Coleridge spoke about uh, or spoke against half knowledge uh, Coleridge had spoken about half knowledge and how it was not good uh, being in half knowledge is not good and all that and Keats actually questions this in a letter to his brother uh, and that is how the ne term negative capability comes in but anyways ST Coleridge also uh, uh, later uh, after few years he, he said half knowledge is better and there thus was born this willing suspension of disbelief okay that was a little bit of uh, no extra uh, uh, points anyway uh, Shelley if you look at Shelley because they were they were all contemporaries Coleridge was uh, the uh, a senior poet and Shelley and also a senior poet to Keats but uh, they were Shelley and uh, Keats were of that uh, the later uh, romantics whereas uh, Wordsworth and uh, Coleridge were the first uh, and Sadi were Robert Sadi were the first romantics the first uh, movement of romanticism they belonged to that first generation and therefore they were considered as senior poets so Shelley uh, was a critic by accident. So Shelley uh, uh, wrote a uh, defense of uh, poesy only to defend his poems or only to defend the attacks on his poems. So Coleridge, if you look at Coleridge, 
he was a critic as well as a poet and Shelley he was a poet and a critic accidentally. Keats was neither a professional critic like Coleridge nor or, or even Hazlitt or because Hazlitt, uh, yeah, Keats was very much influenced by Hazlitt and his lectures uh, and it is it had a profound influence on um, Keats, uh, Hazlitt's lectures. In fact, this negative capability and all comes out from the after listening to Hazlitt's lectures as well. So it was it had a profound influence on Keats. So he was however not a professional critic like Coleridge or Hazlitt or even Lamb, Charles Lamb, but uh, nor was he uh, a critic by accident like uh, Shelley. He wrote no theories. But then how then, then do we have this concept of uh, negative capability? See, Keats, as I told you, regularly visited Hazlitt's lectures. This shaped his ideas on poetry. Hazlitt's lectures um, inspired him to write letters and he wrote some of his concepts like this negative capability when he travelled. Now, many of these people, that is the Londoners, these people from Europe, the British people, uh, especially these Londoners, they travelled a great deal from London to uh, the seaside and Keats uh, also travelled a lot. And during this time when he was on his travel, when he travelled, he used to write letters to his siblings and also to his friends. And thus he wrote, in these letters he expressed some of his thoughts and also some of his critical ideas such as negative capability and also egoistical sublime uh, in letters that he wrote to his siblings, to his brothers and sisters, sorry to his brothers uh, and his sister and also his friends. Now, um, what is this negative capability first of all? Let's get to understand what negative capability is. This was written in a December 1817 letter to his brother and in the, in the letter he uh, speaks uh, he says that negative capability is when a man is capable of being in uncertainties, mysteries and doubts without any irritable reaching out of fact or reason. Now that is important. Without any reaching out of fact or reason. So this means that the author should have the negative capability to be in mysteries, to be in doubts. He should not be able to solve many of the problems himself. He himself shouldn't know answers to some of the problems that, is aris uh, or that arises in his uh, stories. He shouldn't know how to resolve problems raised in his own writings. This is important because the poet will therefore do not dominate or they he will not dominate over the text. The text will have an independent life of its own. If the poet dominates over the text and tries to give answers to all the problems that has been that arises then it is not an example to negative capability it is an example to egoistical sublime which wordsworth possessed so egoistical sublime the, the writer is in a subjective mood and in egoistical sublime the writer gives you solutions to all the problems whereas a negative capability is when the writer gives you problems introduces uh, 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 the characters introduces the incidents gives you 
the plot and the events that follows and leaves you at that he does not go to solve those problems shakespeare was one according to keats who possessed this negative capability now why is it that hamlet uh, refuses to take revenge on claudius shakespeare does not give us the answer shakespeare does not say that it is because he ha he was suffering from oedipus complex Shakespeare does not say that it is something to do with uh, um, uh, uh, Hamlet's character from birth itself, his his nature of procrastinating. It is the critics who says uh, said all these things. He doesn't. He just leaves it at that. He just he does not. He refuses to give you the reason as to why uh, Hamlet does not. take revenge or keeps procrastinating till the end and brings on a big tragedy uh keats uh used this to describe the quality of selfless receptivity necessary to a true poet now what what is the selfless receptivity i'm i'm going a little further i'm going to explain try to break it down so that you will understand the concept mm. now for example if i am a poet if i am a true poet i must have the selfless receptivity so what is the selfless receptivity for this i have to take you a little again to the letter that keats wrote so that you can understand so in the letter he wrote to that he wrote to his brother he was criticizing colrich and he says or he criticizes colrich for being happy or content uh, or sorry for not being happy or content with half knowledge Coleridge was not content with half knowledge. Coleridge wanted to get to know everything in depth. He wanted to go. He was going after logic in the initial uh, stages. Or he was uh, he was not happy with the the uh, you know uh, of not completely understanding or resolving problems. Why the problems were not resolved, and. that is what uh keats is criticizing so uh he says that shakespeare on the other hand he takes us to a world of imagination he uh breaks all logic now in macbeth if you look at macbeth from nowhere you have witches the witches come the witches dance the witches speak to macbeth and macbeth alone is able to see the witches macbeth and banquo of course in the beginning later when macbeth becomes this monstrous beast the 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 way he why he does he kill duncan there is the, the, we don't go uh, beyond the, we, we don't ask questions we readers just leave it at that kadayile vera chodyo illa atan it's like so we don't ask questions we don't get to you know why did he kill duncan we don't get to answer or we don't answer all those uh, these questions are not answered then next uh, uh, why does he kill uh, macduff why does he kill macduff's family why does he kill duncan how come he sees duncan sorry not duncan um uh, banco and how come he sees the ghost of banco and all that all those questions all right these we don't the readers don't go after those facts so uh, likewise if uh, may, you cannot see shakespeare or the the, the dominant uh, voice of shakespeare anywhere in macbeth you will not find it in hamlet you will not find it in othello you will not find it in king lear it keeps changing you will not find shakespeare anywhere so the author is actually dead 
the author is not giving you answers also he is not solving the problem he just leaves it and gives it to the audience and the audience accepts it, these things as they are without questioning okay so as i told you later coleridge also accepted it and he spoke about the willing suspension of disbelief which is quite similar to negative capability so coming back to the point so if a poet or if as a poet or a writer i am writing something then i do not have to go behind irritable facts or reason if uh, if i am a poet and a writer and i am writing something then i don't have to go behind uh, go uh, for irritable searching after fact or reason so art if you look at art art is not to do with your brain art is to do with your blood your emotions all right your imagination it is not to do with the fact that's why we say often say when you are from the science background or from the commerce background and not from the humanities background when you come to start study english literature there are certain times where you and you would ask why miss why does this happen how come there was a few students uh, who asked when i taught uh, to a skylark uh and i told them it, the skylark is not just a skylark but also the thought that uh, uh shelly uh, presents to us it is a metaphor it stands as a metaphor for thought itself uh few of them we found it very difficult to understand because they are not they are from the science background they are from the commerce background and they were not willingly or they could not willingly suspend their disbelief So when you are studying art you have to think with your heart with your mind and not from your brain it's all to do with imagination your mind your blood and not your brain okay so negative capability can be taken to characterize an impersonal or an objective author the author is objective not subjective he does not force himself to, into it who maintains an aesthetic distance from uh, uh his uh characters from his uh, story and also from the audience and uh, it is opposed to a subjective author who personally gets involved uh with the characters and with the actions and represents uh, or that is represented in his work and he tries to give solutions to the or the you know give reasons as to why this is happening as to why this happened he gives reason so that becomes very subjective whereas in an objective reader he the, the reader does not give you any instance as to why this is happening it happens the which is come from nowhere it happens uh, hamlet procrastinates why nothing is explained he keeps procrastinating he just procrastinates he doesn't want to kill at that time he does not want to kill claudius he waits and waits and waits and procrastinates and procrastinates why is not answered and it leaves uh, us baffled why why we don't know but anyway we like the play and we don't question it so if i try to inject uh the writer that is if the writer tries to inject his or her personal belief like wordsworth had done everywhere you look at it you will find words words personal experiences personal uh, uh, uh subjective mood of uh, words word he gives it from his perspective he always speaks from his perspective his point of view that is not a, a, a negative capability instead it is egoistic sublime it's called egoistic sublime where you are very subjective and where the writer injects his or her personal beliefs onto the uh, audience or the reader and also to gives uh, his or her beliefs to the character okay that's why i said you will not find it in shakespeare because macbeth 
is different from Othello. Othello is different from Hamlet. Hamlet is different from Lear. Lear is different from King uh, Duke Orsino. Uh, Orsino is different from Malvolio. Malvolio is different from uh, who? Um, uh, Antonio. Antonio is different from Viola. Viola is different from Olivia. Yes. Uh, uh, Olivia is different from Desdemona. So you will not find any characteristics of Shakespeare or his beliefs anywhere in these uh, characters. He lets his characters lose. He lets he, the witches, when the witches come, he does not control the witches. The witches, he, it is as though uh, the, the witches are given life of its own. Where does the witches come from? It's not answered. They just come from nowhere upon the heath to meet Macbeth. Right? How did they come to know that Macbeth is going to uh, become, soon become uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Lord? Hmm? Nothing is explained. And also they prophesize Banco. Right? How? Nothing is explained. It just, just leaves it at that. And the audiences or the reader, readers are also happy at it. They accept it willingly. All right. So as a writer, I, what I should do, I should keep aloof myself with the character or the world uh, I am uh, presenting. I should not involve myself. My writings, I should be able to give the characters the ability to present themselves. I shouldn't impose or inject my views onto them. All right. And other the ende kada patrangal ka ende shabdamala. Nere marche, avar ka purna mai mavarde logatil avarde chindagal ka adhe poltane. Uh, uh, it's like a kite. Let them fly. The kite it goes as per the uh, as how the wind would take it. Let the string loose instead of holding the string tight. Let the ling string loose. All right. So uh, I must not identify uh, anything. I must not. In fact, object or resist any character from uh, doing something just because I don't like it. Just because I say, okay, uh, in witches, I want the uh, supernatural element to take place. The witches is an epitome of evil. Uh, I am very God fearing. I don't want them to, uh, I don't want Macbeth to fall for it. I'm against it. Or I don't want Macbeth to kill Duncan because I don't want it to happen. No, that's not how it is. You should be able to allow the character to form its own voice and let it, uh, let it perform the way it has to. Now you must be wondering, it comes from the, uh, it comes from the same pen or it comes from the writer's head. It means that you should be able to possess that particular capability that what is negative capability that ability you should be able to have that ability to be in uncertainties in doubts in mysteries you should not think okay if i write like this the writers or the, the readers will what if the readers ask how did this come from how did this happen no, a writer need not solve any of these problems. A writer can let the problems remain like that. Because the audience, when they read it also, they will accept it and they will also leave it at that. Because a human being should always be in uncertainties. A human being should always be in mysteries. Don't try to solve problems. Let it be like that. For example, our Ravana, example the myth of Ravana, the ten headed Ravana. A writer has created it out of his imagination. 
Now we might wonder how come a person will have 10 heads, how can that happen when he gets angry he has all those 10 heads, how does it come out, right? But do we argue, do we say that it's wrong? We take it, we take it because uh, uh, we accept it as a powerful character. So what are we doing here? We are willingly as so S.T. Coleridge says later, as S.T. Coleridge has said, we are willingly suspending our own disbelief. We know it is not true, we know it is not a fact, but still we are ready to disbelieve. We are uh, ready, sorry, we are ready uh, to uh, suspend our disbelief. Okay? We are ready to suspend our disbelief. What is belief? Belief is when you go after fact. Right? When do you disbelieve? When there is no fact. Fact is in the parayambarana, like fact or truth or logic or illa in the parayambarana, we disbelieve in it. So, what are we doing? We are willingly, purposefully suspending, okay? Suppressing, suspending our disbelief. That is, we do not question. We believe. We accept. We don't disbelieve even if it is like uh, a train coming out from nowhere. Hogwarts Express in J.K. Rowling. It comes out from nowhere. We disbelieve. We are willing to suspend our uh, disbelief. Right? Uh, so... The moment we establish, now that is a capacity that a, an author should have. Therefore, we establish a oneness with what? Oneness with imagination. We are not going, imagination is the opposite of reality. It stands op opposite to reality, opposite to beliefs, opposite to logic, opposite to truth. So we are becoming in one with what? One with imagination. And therefore we are willingly suspending our disbelief. Alright? Now this is a similar or same concept as negative capability. Keats regarded Shakespeare as the prime example of negative capability. Because Shakespeare takes us to a vast world of witches, supernatural forces and many scenes beyond the real life. But we don't argue. We do not put in our logic into it. We just accept it. And we relish it. We the, the relish the words of the witches. Right? What is it? Uh, Fair is foul and foul is fair, hover through the fog and filthy air. Alright? So, uh, we, we in fact relish uh, it as the, uh, just like the author relishes it. The author is happy, he, he relishes it. He gives the character loose, he let loose. Uh, the character and he let loose his imagination, like he lets his imagination flow. He does not uh, make uh, or he does not allow his logic or his uh, reasoning capacity to stop him. He allows or enables the ability to let loose his imagination and as an audience we also relish it. We do not go for the Wordsworthian egoistical subline where I impose my belief or I try to give reasons. No, negative capability does not do that. I don't become subjective. I become objective with my uh, characters. J.K. Rowling in uh, how J.K. Rowling has done it in Harry Potter, uh, Jurassic Park, the alien invasions, Bahubali, another example, how he jumps from one mountain to the other. We don't question that, all those things. How he gets onto the fort and all, how he fights. 
in fact we we relish it because it's it is the creativity of the uh, of the script writer his imagination where the character has been given his uh, you know he he is let loose the the he does the uh, script writer does not think okay the audience will find it very stupid because how can a person jump from one uh, building uh, from one uh, from a uh, from uh, uh, from the ground to that of the uh, of a big fort that is impossible he doesn't think that think that way and stop his uh, writing he, uh, let loose his imagination he doesn't think about it right he gives and 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 also the audience also does not think much about it though it perhaps the audience would find it okay amusing they don't question they just leave it at that and they relish it that's that's one thing jurassic park another thing anaconda uh, these movies we don't question these things no? we know it is not true but still we don't question them we in fact relish them we like them and that is because we are willingly suspending our disbelief that is what is happening we have that negative capability of you know believing or relishing it and not going after facts okay so we'll stop here uh thank you and i hope you understood negative capability and also willing suspension of disbelief both are similar topics one is by uh, john keats keats actually uh, spoke about negative capability and later or oh, it was actually criticizing coleridge uh, for his uh, you know um, for being too adamant and going after facts or going after or which, where coleridge was against half knowledge uh keats was saying or uh, according to keats half knowledge should is is like willingly you are uh, you are putting things in uncertainties because half knowledge you don't give you don't have to solve problems you let it uh let the audience or let the readers solve it or uh even the readers will not be going uh, to will not be solving or trying to break their head in fact they'll enjoy it so the writer does not have to what he the writer does not have to uh, go after uh, facts or reasons and uh, he can just leave it at that okay so here what was happening is this is actually foreshadowing uh, the idea of death of the author you have studied death of the author roland barthes so this is this idea is uh, this or this uh, concept is foreshadowing this idea the author should not be the authority in the text he should stand apart from the text the author should be impersonal said t s eliot and all these are therefore related ideas so that's it thank you and keep safe